Hi, everybody. I just thought I would pop in really quick and talk a little bit about um, adding run stitches as details on top of fill stitches. Um, we see some, it's a great way of adding accents or giving extra details on top of, of to show things um, in a design. But you have to be kind of mindful when you're digitizing because what you see in the software is not necessarily what you'll get when you get to the embroidery machine. It's very difficult to see. Let's pop in the software and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we go. Okay, I have a, a plain circle here. I basically, I use my circle tool to draw a shape and put a fill stitch in. Now I move my start and stop to opposite sides so that it's just gonna fill nice and straight and I've left the angle at zero. So that's this barbell going across here. When you put your mouse cursor on the barbell and look at your status bar, you'll see it says either 180 or zero. That's what the angle is on these stitches. So what that means is all of these stitches are going straight across. It's just a fill stitch. And let's just for, for giggles here, I'm going to use my drawing, my um, a square tool here, left click, draw a square on top of it because it's pretty much going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and let's assign this to be a run stitch and I'm going to change the color to be uh, just a darker color in here. Let's find one. Nice, nice, nice red. That shows up. Okay. So on the screen, it looks like it's going to show up perfectly fine. I mean, it's, it's nice red. It's hanging out there. However, this top and for, for the first thing, just pay attention. This is just a single stitch with a stitch length of 2.5 millimeters. Okay. It, the top and the bottom are going in the exact same angle zero. So when you stitch this out, these stitches here are most likely going to get embedded inside the fill stitch of the circle. So it, the ones going this direction, because they're perpendicular, they'll lie on top. So you actually see them, but these guys are going to be embedded inside that fill stitch simply because that's how it's going to work. That's Thread has a dimension. It's not just a flat fill and you don't just put a color on top of it. it. There's no punched out hole and you definitely don't want to put a hole in this because that's just going to make more mess. But you need us need to pay attention. Okay. If this is what you want, then something has to change. A quick and easy change is to select the angle of your fill stitch on the bottom and just change it just a little bit so that it's not going in the exact same direction as everything else. I mean, that's, that's a quick and easy change right now. When you, when I just, by moving that one little angle a little bit, my stitches will have a tendency to lay on top more so that they're not going to get sucked into that fill stitch. Another thing, if this is just, whoops, let's go back here to this run. This is just a single run. It means it's going to start here in this corner and do one single pass going through here. So if I change this to be a um, double run, first of all, that gives it a little more beef. So that would might give it a little more, let it pop on top. Another option would be to use a bean stitch, which is going to do heavier stitching. But again, if we hadn't changed this angle of the fill stitch underneath, eh, it just may be embedded more. <laughs> so it would show more because it'd be more thread there, but it wouldn't um, be laying on top of the stitches. A third option, which is probably the one that I would choose, there's the back stitch or the stem stitch. Now, if you choose the back stitch, you'll see that it's kind of staggered. And that's because the angles of the stitches that are going through here are just a little bit offset. So your stitches will have a tendency to lay more on top and you can get a, some that will also be able to be done in a, uh, three or this is basically a, um, a triple stitch that's going in, in this direction. The other option would be to be a stem stitch. Now with the stem stitch, you have the ability to change the rotation. So the smaller, the number here, 
the closer to zero it gets. But you'll have to notice because this is only a, uh, the way that this stitch is engineered, you may get wonky corners. So you'll have to do some finagling with that too, um, with your hard corners to get that to work right. Maybe change your width. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you'll have to, um, to play with to get your stitches to look the way that you want them to look. So, but the back stitch would probably be my choice if I wanted just a, um, a single run going through this without changing the fill stitch on the bottom. And that's because the needle points are going to go a little, you can see how they, they're at a little bit of an angle. So they kind of will grab onto the edges and not get sucked into that fill stitch underneath. So those are just a couple tips that I thought if you're adding a, um, accents, little lines, things like uh, wrinkles, like the, those uh, designs shown on the page of Yoda. And it was a, a cute little design, but some of the, the details got sucked in. So by simply changing that type of fill stitch, for the running stitch to be a uh, back stitch as opposed to just a single run, it will show up more. Now, the one other thing I wanted to point out is if you want to, if you have a shape like the circle and you want to make a outline on it, so you, each object can only have one job. Remember that, right? One job. So if you want the fill to have an outline, you need to have a circle that is a fill and the circle that is the outline. So I'm going to select the one that's filled here. Go to copy and paste, and it throws it towards at the end. That's because I just pasted it in there, and I can just click hold and drag it up to the, right above it so I can order it the way I need to be. Select it and change this to be my running stitch. Now it remembers the last stitch type I chose. If I don't want a back stitch on that, I would change it to a double, which is typically how I. Um, a running stitch outline goes, but this will give me a fill stitch and then my run stitch that's after it. And of course I just happened to, when I clicked on my fill stitch and I saw that it was stopping here at the top. See that what that little red bow tie is. When I click on my run stitch, I definitely want my running stitch to start at the top so that we don't have that long jump going all the way across the top. But this will allow you, this will put you a running stitch all the way around. You want it to be a different color, just click on it. You click on the color chip, change it to be that same lovely red that we already had in there, and it will be there. After you do your test sew, if you notice that in the angle of your stitching, that the fill does not match your outline, because right here, our, it's it's dead balls on. It is right exactly at the edge of the outline. If you go to your fill and you go to the button here that says adjust the pull compensation, click on this button. You can change your percentage and normally I would bump it up to 3% or 4% depending on um, how it is. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, that doesn't look right in my software but you did your test so and you noticed that you had a gap. So when your fill doesn't meet your outline, it's most, most of the time it's in this direction of these stitches, your angle of where they're going. And this, so the compensation compensates for that. It makes the stitches oval or more wider in that direction so that when they pull, they actually will line up to where your outline is supposed to be. And if you notice, just for, for giggles here, watch what happens to that compensation when you change the angle. Do you see how it got wider in that direction? Because that's how it's compensating. So this is a mathematical computation. Depending on your angle of your fill stitch, that is how it's going to compensate a little bit bigger. If after doing multiple, multiple designs on your test sews and you happen to find that every single time you do a fill, you need to adjust the compensation, then I would say, yes, you need to go through, you can go through and check this and change this to what it needs to be because you have that experience on what it, what happens at your machine. There is no blanket value that works for everybody. Nor 
I rarely change that number. And maybe it's because the materials I use, that I hoop, I don't float. I, I just, I adjust my outlines manually because I don't really, it's just my style. I haven't had a need to. And if, but if I did, I would adjust my percentage after I do my test. So I don't adjust it beforehand. However, you get, we all get routines. And you, if you find you're always having to adjust your compensation, there you go. You can go and adjust it and now do your first test. So, and you'll be all set. So anyway, I just thought I would uh, pop in and give that quick little explanation on how to check your angles, make sure that your running stitch details on top don't get sucked into the fill stitch. And of course, a little bit more extras. So thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.